Welcome to Fox and Media Digital. My name is Okako. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Shobi Kelleher, Global Head of Enterprise Data at Yanis Anderson. Hi, Shobi. It's great to have you on our channel. Thanks for having me. So let's jump right in. Let's talk about data integration. In your opinion, what are the what are currently the biggest challenges when integrating data from various sources? There's a few different challenges with this. The first one, I think, is data quality and consistency. Ensuring the quality and consistency of data across different sources is a major challenge. You may have inconsistencies in format, in structure, naming conventions, which really makes it difficult to kind of clean it, get it in a consistent format, and then integrate it into a standardized layer. The second challenge, I think, is around variety of data, right? You can have structured data, semi-structured data, unstructured data that are coming in from numerous sources. Again, integrating these differ, diverse types of data sets and formats is pretty complex, and it needs specialized people, specialized types of tooling and techniques. So that's another challenge. The biggest challenge, I think, in my mind is really that most organizations, especially in financial services, rely on legacy systems. And those are not necessarily compatible with modern data integration tools. So getting that data out of legacy systems, standardizing them to a format is time consuming, it's expensive, um, and it's not something that we can necessarily do without, but we also have to think about how to scale it in an appropriate manner. And how about uh, data culture? So how do you foster a data-driven culture within your organization? I think one of the most important things about fostering a data different culture is to get buy-in and advocacy from your leadership, securing that commitment from top management, because leadership should not only endorse it, but also actively participate in enforcing data-driven activities. And how to best prepare for the next wave of data technology advancements? Wow, um, this is going to be a multi-part answer, so bear with me here. I think the first piece of it is we need to have a shift towards cloud-based solutions. And that trend is set to continue. It's already happening right now. But more and more organizations are leveraging cloud-based cloud -based services for scalable and cost-effective data management solutions. The other trend, I think, is really around real-time processing of data and analytics, which is really an increasing demand right now. Um, and when we start to consume real-time data, start to process it, you know, online personalization, fraud detection, you, you, know, you name it, that's really what the trend is in that space. Um, finally, on the people side, I would say, organizations more and more are recognizing the importance of data literacy across their teams and not just amongst data professionals. Having the data and knowing how to access it are two sides of the same coin. So I think that trend's also going to continue. You mentioned something about real-time analytics and data. So what are the key challenges in implementing real-time analytics and how to overcome overcome them? Well, you know, again, ensuring data quality in real time is very difficult, um, especially when you're integrating data from diverse data sources. Poor data quality is actually, you know, it's dangerous because it could lead to inaccuracies in, you know, the analytics and misguided decisions. So I think that's one key challenge. Um, volume and velocity of that data is really another big challenge because you know, you're know processing real-time data in large volumes, it's high velocity data, managing this information without any kind of meaningful delay or you know, causing a bottleneck somewhere in that process is also a challenge. And lastly, what are you looking forward to at TSAM New York? I'm looking forward to networking for you know various professionals in the field. I think I'm looking forward to seeing how other other firms are handling these types of challenges, um, sharing of some best practices, sharing of some uh, common speed bumps. I think will be a, an interesting dialogue to have. Well, Shobi, thank you so much for joining us today again. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to TSAM. Thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to follow our YouTube channel for more content on all the latest opportunities and challenges in asset management, wealth management, and ESG. And don't forget to give this interview a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button.